Modern dating, when modern dating came in, was actually quite uh, opposite. Many people will trace it back to the sexual revolution of the 1960s, where a man will approach a, a girl or a girl will approach a guy, whatever it may be, and that's how the connect is made. And then that oftentimes is a situation where it's, uh, you know, maybe towards marriage, it may not be towards marriage, and we find that this is similar, what we see happening in the church to what's happening outside of the church, and I think that's why we have so many problems when it comes to divorce, even amongst those that are believers. And so somewhere within all of this, I think that there is an understanding that there has to be a balance. Some people say, well, courtship, okay, what do I do with that? Joshua Harris came out with a book, I Kiss Dating Goodbye. Somebody followed it up with a book, I Kiss Nonsense Goodbye. And you have people that are believers that are on either side of the subject. Some people believing that we need a modern uh, day sense of courtship. Other people believing that you need to go ahead and date different people because it gets you to understand who you are, gets you to understand who they are, and you're putting way too much pressure upon needing to believe that you're going to marry that person simply by asking them if they'd like to have a coffee with you. And so these are the types of things that we look at that we try and juggle to say, well, then what do the scriptures say? And again, the scriptures are silent on dating, but there are some things that I'm going to show you in the word of God in a moment that I think will be helpful. Lisa said, Bill, what would you feel if you were sharing with everybody as to what you would, uh, the sense that you would have for your own daughters? And I have two of my daughters seated here right now, and the sense is they don't date till they're 40. <laughs> and that's, that's what it is, and let's pray, and if you'll come up and sing, and let's... Uh, but, the, uh, but the concept is, is that as a father, as a dad, I want to be very, very much uh, such that they would know they can trust me, and they would know they would be able to speak to me and to their mom about who they would be interested in and uh, who they believe that God would say, you know, is somebody that could have the attributes and the character attributes that could lead to marriage. I would want to be able to speak into that. Lisa would want to be able to speak into that. And let me tell you why. We know Aubrey, we know Taylor, we know Sydney better than uh, anybody else. And when emotions begin to get involved in something, then at that moment, oftentimes people become somewhat blinded to things they need to see. And so as a father, and speaking about a father's heart right now, it would be my desire to be able to have that sense that they weren't doing something independent of me, but instead the sense that I would be able, as an as a earthly dad that wants to go after God's heart with all that's in me to be able to speak into their lives in that way, to help them to know the type of things they should look for. And, uh, and I think that's very, very important. Now, let's look at this a little bit further. Uh, and, you know, one of the things I notice is I'm a minister of the gospel through the years and have done counseling is that many people are confused. Many people are brokenhearted. They've been uh, brokenhearted because they've been trying to uh, date people in the modern sense of the word dating, and they've been getting into situations where as much as they tried to remain pure, they haven't been able to. And so there's a confusion factor, and there's this frustration factor, and, uh, and they're serial dating. Uh, if they're dating at all, they're dating just anybody and for any purpose and just hoping that somehow this is going to turn into marriage, and that's not a way to do it. The people are at that point of being, again, you know, uh, having a lot of questions and slipping in their morality. And so uh, with the statistics, talking to stats again, we find that within the church, it's as bad as within the world when it comes to people and, and, uh, and sexual activity and these ty type of things. And so there are three ways to date uh, that could be considered. One is as an end in and of itself. Uh, and, and so it's not about finding a mate. It's just a social activity. If a mate comes out of it, that's great. Number two, uh, only if you believe, uh, this is the second way to date, is only if you believe uh, that that is your mate and you enter in in that way. That's a lot of pressure. Number three, it's to discover your mate and to do that in a way in which there is a, connected to, a connectedness to others, a connectedness to those that you trust in the Lord, a connectedness if you have a dad, uh, a, a family system that is godly certainly a connectedness in that way. And I think all of that is valuable. Boaz, if you look in the scriptures, you'll find uh, in regard to his relationship with Ruth, uh, you'll find that he actually spoke to 10 elders so that he could uh, speak to them in regard to what would end up being him marrying Ruth. And so there is a sense in which that go should go through uh, a covering 
uh, in a way. Some people that you know that you can honor in the Lord and that will be looking out for you in a way that you may not be able to look out for yourself. Let's look in the Word of God to the book of Genesis for a moment. And we're going to look in the 24th chapter and, uh, and consider some concepts because I think that these concepts are very important. And by the way, what happened when we were just about two, three years old as a church is that we set just an understanding that we need healthy relationships. And I'm going to talk about this just a bit as I close off the message after going through the scriptures here. And that is to set the standard that we should have healthy relationships with good boundaries that honor God and promote a sense in which we are honoring God together. If you see somebody that you think has the potential to be your life's mate and that person is not bringing you closer to God, it ought to have a flashing light to you right away. If that person is not standing for what you hope they would stand for, then you are actually accepting less than what God has for you. So let's look in Genesis, the 24th chapter, together, starting with the first eight verses. Then we'll look at 10 through 21 and then the 51st verse. Abraham was now old and well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the, to the chief servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives, and get a wife for my son, Isaac. The servant asked, what if the woman is unwilling to come back uh, with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you, uh, you came from? Sixth verse, make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me on oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife for my son from there. Eighth verse. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. Now the tenth verse. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and left, taking with him all kinds of good things, from his master. He set out for Aram, uh, Naharaim, and made his way to the town of Nahor. Uh, 11th verse. He had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time uh, that women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, give me success today and show me kindness to my master, show kindness to my master. Abraham, see, I am standing beside this spring, which was a well, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, please let down your jar that I may have a drink, and she says drink, and, and I'll water your camels too, so this is a sign to him, if she'll say it that way, let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master.